Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll discuss about E plane T junction. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. First of all, I'll discuss about basics of E plane T junction. After that, I'll derive scattering parameters of E plane T junction. And at last, I'll discuss about applications of E plane T junction. So let us begin this session with first agenda. That is basics of E plane T junction. If you observe the structure of E plane T junction, then that is having in total three ports. See, this is E arm, that is port number three. And here we have port one and port two. In your laboratory, you might have seen this E plane T junction that is appearing somewhat like this. If you observe the cross section, then here we have E arm, this is port one and this is port two. If you want to understand working, then it is quite simple. If you give input at E arm, then electric field orientation that is shown over here. But if you observe output at port 1 and at port 2, then here at port 1 and at port 2, we have 180 degree out of phase signal. So as and when we give input at E arm, at that time, output will be appearing at port 1 and port 2, right? But that output is having out of phase signal. Magnitude wise, signal will be equal over here at port 1 and at port 2. But phase wise, there is 180 degree phase shift. Here, if you observe, this is E arm. Why it is referred as E arm? The reason is orientation of this arm that is there in alignment of electric field. If you have alignment in this direction, then that alignment is there with respect to magnetic field which is H plane T which we have seen it in my last video. Here with this arm orientation is there with respect to electric field that's why this is E arm and this T is referred as E plane T. Right. So E plane T that is three port device. This E arm that is perfectly matched arm that one can say. And as and when you give input at E arm, output at port 1 and at port 2 is equal and out of phase. That is how basic working and structure is there. So here in E plane T, we have three port device. Here E plane T is having E arm that is one port and two other ports are there. These are these two ports. In total three ports are there. Here port 1 and port 2 are symmetric with respect to E arm. So you can observe this is E arm and this port 1 and port 2, these are symmetric ports with respect to E arm. With E plane T, this E arm that is perfectly matched arm means reflection at that port is zero that one can say. So here return loss at E arm that is zero as it is perfectly matched arm. If you give input at E arm, then output at port 1 and port 2 at these two port that is equal and out of phase. That is how basics are there. Now based on these basics, I'll derive scattering parameters. E plane T junction is three port device. So scattering matrix is having size of three cross three. Let me explain you how. Here S matrix will be S11. S12, S13, S21, S22, S23, S31, S32 and S33. Here we have in total three ports and based on three ports, S matrix is of three cross three size. Now I'll derive this scattering elements. To derive this scattering elements, first of all, one should know the meaning of this scattering elements. In general, if you talk about Sij, then Sij is B divided by A. Here this B is normalized output voltage and this A is normalized input voltage. Here this I states ith output port, this I states ith output port and this J states J input port. This is very essential to understand this scattering parameters. Now to derive these values, 
let me explain working of this e plane t see this e plane t that is having e arm that is port number three and that is perfectly matched arm means reflection at port three is zero so as if reflection at port three is zero then one can say s three three is zero so as this port 3 is perfectly matched arm, S33 is 0. Now let me explain working of this E plane D. If you give input at port 3, if you give input at port 3, then that is equally divided into port 1 and into port 2. But here, see these two signals, which are there at output of port 1 and port 2, that is having 180 degree phase shift that is having 180 degree phase shift as that is having 180 degree phase shift here s13 that is equals to minus of s23 so here when we give input at e arm that is equally divided into port 1 and port 2 but that is having 180 degree phase shift means if you talk about s 1 3 so that is output at 1 input at 3 that is equals to minus of s 2 3 means output at 2 input at 3 right now i'll use property of symmetry property of symmetry states that sij is equals to sji so based on that one can say s 1 2 that is equals to S21 by which we can minimize number of elements. Even one can say S13 that is equals to S31. And here I have explained S13 is minus S23. So this is minus S23 and S23 is S32. So one can say this is minus S32. Now, based on this working and property, we can minimize this scattering matrix. Let me explain you how. Now, here, if you observe, we have S12 that is equals to S21. So, instead of S21, I can write S12 over here. And here, S13 is S31. So, instead of S31, I can write S13 and s13 is minus s23 so instead of minus s13 that can be written over here and s23 that will be minus s13 so here i can write minus s13 right and here s33 that is zero so i need to replace this by zero now we have minimized scattering matrix and with this scattering matrix now I'll apply identity property. Identity property states that S matrix into conjugate of S matrix is identity matrix. So here I'll multiply this S matrix with conjugate of S matrix that is equals to identity matrix. So here we have S matrix into conjugate of S matrix that we need to do. So with each element, I need to place conjugate over here and this matrix multiplication that is resulting into identity matrix in identity matrix diagonal will be one and other elements will be zero so that is how we can apply identity property now based on this identity property I'll calculate values of these elements to calculate values of these elements first of all we will multiply this third row with third row if you multiply third row with third row then you will be getting s13 square plus s13 square that is equals to 1 means s13 is equals to 1 by root 2 now i'll multiply first row with first row if you multiply first row with first row then you will be getting s11 square plus s12 square plus s13 square that is equals to 1 over here and if you carefully observe s13 that is 1 by root 2 so s13 square is half and that half that one can take it on other side so we will be getting 
s11 square plus s12 square that is equals to half let us say this is equation number one now i'll multiply second row with second row so here we will be getting s12 square plus s22 square plus s13 square that is equals to one now here s13 square that is half you can take it on other side so you will be getting s12 square plus s22 square that is equals to half let us say this is equation two if you carefully observe these two equations then here s12 is common right what it means s11 is equals to s22 you can say s11 is equals to s22 right now to identify value what we can do is we can multiply first row with third row so if you multiply first row with third row you will be getting s11 into s13 conjugate plus s12 into minus s13 conjugate and that is equals to this row into this row that will be zero here if you carefully observe s13 conjugate that is common take it outside it is getting multiplied over here so one can say s11 minus s12 is zero so s11 is equals to s12 right this is also very essential relation now from this you can understand one thing you see here s11 square plus s12 square is there so if you place this into equation one s11 square plus instead of s12 square we can write s11 square that is equals to half so here we will be having s11 square that is 1 by 4 so s11 that is equals to half right now we have s11 that is half s11 is s12 that is also half right and s11 is equals to s22 so that is also half and we have s13 that is 1 by root 2 so we can place all these values in this scattering matrix here we have s13 that we have calculated that is 1 by root 2 so i'll be placing that over here s13 is 1 by root 2 and here s11 s12 s22 all these values are half right as per these relations that i have explained so here you need to place half over here right so this is how simply one can derive scattering matrix of e plane d now based on this scattering matrix i'll explain you few essential applications of e plane d working of e plane d is based on input at e arm if you give input at e arm then output at port 1 and at port 2 is equal and out of phase based on this working there are few essential applications like one can use e plane d as a power divider and power combiner if you give input at e arm then power is equally divided into port 1 and at port 2 and if you give input at port 1 and at port 2 then that is getting combined and output is resulting at e arm so that is how simple applications are there even e plane t junction that can be used as a phase shifter if you observe working if you give input at e arm then power is equally divided into port 1 and at port 2 but that power is having 180 degree of phase shift so one can use e plane t junction as a phase shifter e plane t junction is also used in microwave mixtures and it is also applicable in impedance matching network so as and when we have a need of impedance matching at multiple ports at that time one can go for e plane t junction i hope you have enjoyed this session still if anything that you like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video